in this section, I'm going to teach you how to master your internal triggers. Now, what are internal triggers? Internal triggers are these uncomfortable emotional states that we seek to escape from. Why is it so important to understand our internal triggers so that we can finally master them? Well, fundamentally, it's about understanding human motivation. To answer Plato's 2,500-year-old question of why do we do things against our best interests? To answer that question, we need to understand the nature of why we do what we do. Most people, if you ask them, what's the nature of human motivation, they're going to give you some version of carrots and sticks, that everything we do is about the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. Neurologically, we know this to not be true, that in fact, everything you do, you do for only one reason, and that is the desire to escape discomfort. This is called the homeostatic response. Think about it. Physiologically, if you feel cold, your body will tell you to put on a coat. If you feel hot, your brain says, ooh, this is an uncomfortable situation, take off your jacket. If you feel hungry, you feel hunger pangs, so you eat. And if you ate too much, oh, now you feel stuffed, you stop eating. So physiologically, this makes perfect sense. The same holds true psychologically. When we feel bored, lonesome, stressed, anxious, uncertain, we look for things to provide relief for that emotional discomfort. So the first step to becoming financially indistractable is to learn to identify those internal triggers that prompt us to do things that we later might regret. Here are a few techniques that you can use right away to start helping you master those internal triggers. The first thing you can do is to bring awareness to those sensations. So if you can find those times in your life where maybe you got distracted and did something financially that you later regret, maybe it was that splurge purchase or getting out of the markets when you felt fearful, if you can express to yourself what was that emotion, what did you feel before you took that action? Was it that you were feeling lonesome and maybe needed an emotional pick-me-up, which is why you went online shopping and went on that splurge? Were you feeling fear or greed when you made that bad mistake in the markets? What was it that you felt right before initiating that action? Now, before you criticize yourself and beat yourself up, know that that is not what psychologists recommend. Rather, what we want to do is to explore these sensations with curiosity rather than contempt. One technique that I use almost every single day is called the 10-minute rule. The 10-minute rule says that you can give in to any temptation, whether it's that splurge purchase or maybe that piece of chocolate cake you're trying to avoid if you're on a diet or checking your phone when you know you want to be fully present with the work you're doing, telling yourself that you can give in to that distraction, not right now, but in 10 minutes is a very effective technique. How does this work? This is called surfing the urge. Surfing the urge acknowledges that that craving, that desire, that urge is something that crests and subsides. Our emotions are transitory. So if we can ride that sensation, ride that urge, like a surfer on a surfboard, for just a few minutes, what we will find is that that sensation will crest and then subside. So if you have that impulse purchase that you just want to buy on Amazon and click that Buy It Now button, or uh, if you get fearful in the markets and you feel like selling or buying when you know that might not be a financially prudent decision, to just take a few minutes to pause, set a timer for 10 minutes, Take a deep breath and just surf that urge. What you will find is by the time those 10 minutes are up, that sensation, that craving, that itch will no longer exist. Now, financial experts also say that it's a good idea to give yourself more time the bigger the financial decision might be. So if it's maybe that luxury car that you're thinking about splurging on or some other purchase that maybe you're not sure you can fit in your budget, giving yourself a little bit more time. Some people call it the 72-hour rule. Waiting three days before you make any drastic financial decision can be a good way to cool down those internal triggers so you're not making a decision you'll later regret. Another technique we can use to master our internal triggers is to use a visualization exercise. Now, you might have heard of visualization, and I want to tell you there's a right way and a wrong way to use this technique. The wrong way is very popular these days. It's called making a vision board, which involves putting your dreams on a poster and visualizing for yourself what the perfect life might look like. For example, if you want to retire early, maybe you'll think of yourself sunning away on a beach with a big daiquiri. That is not helpful. Studies find, in fact, that when we visualize an outcome like planning for retirement, it actually makes us less likely to do the hard work of achieving that goal by giving this, this squirt of happiness that makes us feel a little bit like we've already accomplished the endeavor. The right way to visualize instead 
is to visualize what you will do when you are tempted towards distraction on the path to your goal. So the right way to visualize is to think for yourself, what will I do when I feel these internal triggers that might take me off track? For example, a big mistake a lot of investors make is to sell out during a market correction. Now, stock markets go through bear phases and bull phases, and they oftentimes will have these market corrections of 10% or more. Financial experts tell us that the correct way to ride out a market correction is to sit still, not panic, make sure that we're on the straight and narrow, and not let our emotions get the best of us. Although what most people do is sell out when the market is tanking and buy in when the market is rallying, reducing their long-term gains. So by recognizing these internal triggers and making sure that we master them rather than letting them become our master, this is how we make sure we take our first step to becoming financially indistractable. Finally, we want to be careful of hedonic adaptation. Hedonic adaptation is our tendency to return to a base level of satisfaction no matter what really happens to us in life. Studies have found that when people win the lottery, they're happy for a while, and then they drift down towards their base level of happiness. The same goes for amputees who might lose a leg and are very disappointed for a while and then somehow miraculously go back to their base level of satisfaction after a, a period of time. Now, this tendency serves us but also can hurt us because it turns out that as life goes on, we always maintain this base level of dissatisfaction, meaning that our core human condition is to always want more. We constantly adapt no matter what we have in life. We always seek to have better and bigger and more. No matter what we have in life, we always seek to improve our lot. And in many ways, that's a very good thing. It's this tendency to never be satisfied that keeps us striving and creating and inventing things to improve our lot in life. But if we're not careful, that tendency towards dissatisfaction can lead us towards escapism, whether it's drinking too much, scrolling too much, or spending too much, to escape those uncomfortable internal triggers. How do we make sure that hedonic adaptation doesn't get the best of us? A simple practice called keeping a gratitude journal helps us stay grounded, taking a few minutes every week to recognize all the blessings that we have, whether that's having food on the table, our health, or living in a country that's not in war. So this practice of keeping a gratitude journal can help us appreciate what we have and make sure that hedonic adaptation doesn't get the best of us. In the next section, we'll talk about how to plan for traction.